there still exists a general state of either denial, complacency, or even apathy about both the reality and the potential effects of Y2K. By the end of the 90s, many of us were happy slaves to our computers. But our new masters had a trick they had forgotten to tell us about. The basic idea on Y2K was that for convenience, all these computer programs, when it came to do dates, you only needed two numbers. Why use four numbers when you only need two? And then they recognized what date is a computer going to think it is when we get to 2000. One simple date change for man, one major screw up for computer. At the stroke of midnight, January 1st, 2000, elevators may stop, heat may vanish, credit cards and ATMs may cease to function, airplanes and trains may come to a halt. People were terrified the world was going to end. This is not one of the summer movies where you can close your eyes during the scary parts. With nearly everything in our economy run by computers, the prospect of a digital meltdown is too huge to contemplate. I was worried because the whole computer game was new to us, and I was a little ignorant. We didn't know what we didn't know. And many thought what we didn't know was going to hurt us. I've got a, a revolver right now, but I wanted something, something more. That was a dragon's breath shell. It can shoot a 4,000 degree flame 300 feet. It's also the most popular ammunition among Y2K customers at KGS Guns and Ammo. There was a fear. Everything's in the internet, everything's in computers, and we're gonna lose it all, and Jesus is coming back. With pre-millennium tensions growing, the president appoints a crisis management expert to prevent a Y2K meltdown. Eight to 10% of the population were fairly confident that this was going to be uh, an apocalypse. The president called me one night and said, here's an office and an assistant, and don't let the world stop. 